Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm very honoured to rise today uh, in support of my colleague from Sackville Eastern Shore, Bill uh, C-201, that uh, would be bring fairness to pensions to uh, ex-service officers, RCMP officers. I think it is no accident that this debate is happening now as we're celebrating the 65th anniversary of the Battle for the Atlantic and the, and the liberation of Holland. I know many veterans in my riding who did the uh, horrible slogging up with the Algonquin Regiment through the Leopold Canal and the Shelton into Holland. And I was talking with a young Algonquin officer, a reservist, Murray Tilson, who was uh, there with the veterans uh, for one of the big commemorations in Holland. And Murray is of my generation. And the young woman came up during the celebration and kissed him on the cheek and said, thank you for liberating us. And he said, I didn't liberate you. And she said, no, but if we needed you, we know that you would. It shows that kind of bond that we have built in terms of the Canadian identity and our relationship to the people of Holland and the sacrifice that was taken. But Mr. Speaker, I also remember doing a great interview with Johnny LeBlanc, who was a real tough-as-nails union organizer from Northern Ontario. And Johnny used to walk into the bush camps uh, 26 miles into the bush in the middle of the winter by himself to organize these bush uh, camps and ship bosses certainly didn't like Johnny coming in and I said to Johnny was there ever a threat of violence with you having to walk into these bush camps that were militantly anti-union and Johnny said there was always a threat and I said to Johnny what was it that gave you the courage to walk in to start organizing those camps for the workers who were cutting for Abba Tibby and Kimberly Clark and he said I was with the tanks and I was fought our way up through Belgium and I fought our way into Holland and he said when I came back after I saw so many people die, nobody was going to deny me of the rights that I had fought for. And I think that that message uh, is something we need to think of today, Mr. Speaker, because it's not just about Remembrance Day that we wrap ourselves in the flag. There was a sacrifice not just for Europe, but there was a sacrifice for Canada and a sacrifice for a certain set of ideals and principles. And I think of Johnny LeBlanc, who helped organize all those workers who ended up working for the largest pulp and paper company in the world, Abba Tibby. And I think of the Abba Tibby workers and pensioners today who are looking uh, as their, their pension savings, their futures, are being threatened. And I see the absolute indifference from the federal conservative government in terms of the pension crisis facing us. And Mr. Speaker, make no mistake, we are facing a full-blown pension crisis in this country, and we see absolute indifference from the federal government. Uh, earlier this year, our, our leader uh, from uh, Toronto Danforth attempted to work with the Conservatives. He said, listen, you've been giving one massive corporate tax cut after another. Hold off on this latest round that you're offering. It's $1.7 billion to the big banks and the oil companies. Put some of that money into the GIS for the seniors who are living in poverty now. You could raise the uh, basic income of every senior out of poverty with a stroke of a pen. But of course, uh, the Conservatives are not there uh, to worry about the, the seniors in poverty. They're more worrying about their friends at BP and Exxon and making sure that they continue to do well. Mr. Speaker, we see now the HST that's being taken off corporate enterprises and put on senior citizens, people in fixed income, people in my riding who uh, are, are barely scraping by senior citizens who are now having to pay the extra HST on their home heating fuels. And even if they try and make savings, people who are working to save for the pensions that they don't have, they're having to pay the HST. We see a massive shift in the tax burden away from the large corporations onto people on fixed income, onto senior citizens. And we see nothing but uh, contempt and ridicule from this government because they are not there for the people who need them. But I, Mr. Speaker, I would argue that our job as parliamentarians is to ensure that there is a fair system for pensions in this country. Uh, the New Democrats have pushed forward for a number of key changes. A simple change would be uh, changing the bankruptcy protection law so that the Nortel workers, the Can West workers, the Abitibi workers, they're not going to be at the end of the line if uh, the CCAA protection fails and those companies go into full bankruptcy. They're looking for action from us, and they're not seeing anything from the Conservative government. We need to look at increase in the GIS, as I had mentioned, so that seniors who are living in poverty be taken out of poverty. And of course, the other major issue is that vast majority of uh, Canadians now have no pension plan, and they're moving from job to job. We have to start moving towards eventually doubling the CPP so people can actually have proper pension savings. 
Mr. Speaker, it's, it's pretty shocking that in Canada in 2010, for all the talk about loving our troops, that we have veterans who are using food banks. I would uh, argue, Mr. Speaker, and I would think that food banks, that our veterans are having to use food banks is a, is a disgrace, and it's a sign of the failure of this government to look out for the people who are falling beneath the cracks. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm very uh, supportive of this Bill C-201, which would bring an element of fairness to the people who put their lives on, their, on the line for us throughout their career, the ex-RCMP officers, the ex-military uh, personnel, who are only looking for a fair deal. Now, Mr. Speaker, the bill has to do with the uh, Canada pension deductions, the clawbacks that happen when members are, end up becoming disabled or when they collect the Canada pension disability and how it relates to their superannuation. We need to ensure that these people uh, are not penalized unfairly for the service they've given this country. Now, this all goes back to 1966 when the Canada Pension Plan was first set up and the government split the contributions of the deductions to the superannuation and to the Canada Pension Plan. But nobody told the military uh, who were out there in the field uh, defending us how it was going to affect them. Now, Mr. Speaker, here's a, here's a sad example. Say uh, we have an officer in the RCMP, 30 years of service and becomes disabled. Now, he received 64% of a superannuation, and then Great West Life topped it up to 75% by adding an initial 11%. And then after two years, Great West Life shuts it off, and he has to then apply for the Canada Pension Disability. So he applies for the Canada Pension Disabilities and re receives a lump sum of $16,000. And then he gets a call from the RCMP annuity branch, which says he owes them over $11,000. And that would have been the deduction if he had received CPP from the beginning. Therefore, he, he was having to pay all the money that he had received back. But then Great West Life told him that he owed them over seven to $8,000. So because he had received $16,000 in this lump sum payment, he ended up having to pay back over $19,000. And this was the money because they were clawing back the money that had been paid to him. And then when he turned 65, his Canada pension disability is shut off and he gets the reduced CPP. Mr. Speaker, I don't think that that's fair. Not for people that we pay uh, to put their lives on the, on the line for us. I think we need to work better as a House of Commons, work more collaboratively, stop using our soldiers as a, a political shield for the government's mistakes, and to say that when they're overseas and when they're putting their lives on the line, that when they come back, they and their loved ones will be looked after, and their pensions will be fully protected. Mr. Speaker, I don't think that that's too much to ask from any member of parliament, from any political party. No more lip service. And what we need is uh, to move away from the lip service about loving our troops to saying when they come home and when they are senior citizens or when they're disabled or they're widows, that they will be looked after in a fair system, that their money is not being clawed back by the government or clawed back by, by, ins by insurance, that they will have what they need. That is the covenant that we must make within this House to our veterans and to the uh, RCMP and other federal service people who, who risk their lives for us. Mr. Speaker, though, it also reminds us that we have to do better in addressing the pension crisis. Senior citizens are suffering in this country, and they're suffering from the indifference of a government that is pushing the HST on them because they want to shift the tax burden off the large corporations and put it onto people on fixed income. They are suffering because we have a government that has no interest in standing up for the Abitibi or the Nortel pensioners because they'd rather help the big creditors at the big banks. Mr. Speaker, that is a shame, and that is not the great tradition that we built in Canada, and we in the New Democratic Party will continue to fight for pension fairness for our veterans, for ex-police officers, for our firefighters, and for all our senior citizens. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.